Yo, what's up guys? You've got Lightning here, coming back at you with another gameplay. Uh, this time, this is a game, it was actually recorded uh, as I was playing it, and I'm doing the voice after the game's been played. I've been having trouble playing uh, well and focusing while uh, recording and commentating, so every time I go to do it, I just can't seem to focus, and I, I can't really do what I'm trying to explain in the game, because uh, I talk too much. So I'm just going to keep doing it like this for now. Uh, if you guys are watching my video and you want me to do um, live commentaries, uh, so doing the, um, the commentary as I'm playing the game live, um, just let me know and I'll try and give it a go. Maybe if I just play on a Smurf or something, I can just, um, you know, it requires less brain power to, to, to function. So <clears throat> this is just a fun game on a Smurf account. I just wanted to showcase it because, you know, it just shows that... Um, if you know the matchup and you know the other champion, uh, especially in this matchup here versus Lux, you can just totally run away with the game. And given their team comp and, and I'm Aurelia, I can play quite an assassin type type of Aurelia, which is what I really love playing, especially in the mid lane when I'm playing a mid, mid lane Aurelia. So I've run Ignite, we're going full like um, 21, 21-9. Uh, the runes of mastery should have been up on the screen earlier, um, so you should have been able to see it anyway. But um, we just go full balls deep in this matchup, um, full damage, full. <laughs> it's just really fun because you just you just go on these squishies like Lux. You know, Lux is a really conditional champion. She she needs to have her cooldowns up if she uses an ability uh, like her, if she uses a her Q, her stun. Um, <laughs> you know, she's got nothing else left to stop me. So uh, it's quite fun. Just uh, I got hit by that. That's not good. It's quite fun just, just doing this matchup and just watching her waste her abilities and, and then just going ham. Look, she used Ignite already, <laughs> so I've got the Ignite advantage already at level 2, which is pretty cool. Like, I'm, I'm fine with her using Ignite, um, because I, me with Ignite, I can burst her a lot harder than she can burst me. She's, she, she wasted her Q yet again. Um, I'm just trying to heal up before I go in. If I go in now, she, and her, she's got no mana either, so I'm just she's just hurting right now. She's only got Flash. And I do, I do go in here. Let's see what happens. Okay, I do that. I do get the kill. It was kind of close, but I was feeling pretty confident. She had no mana, no ignite, so she only had her auto attacks. So, um, it was quite an easy kill. But you know, you just all you got to do in this matchup, if you ever do play this matchup mid, if you if you do play a rally a mid or anyone mid, is is look for Lux's uh, weak spot, which is when she uses her Q to farm. If she uses her Q to farm, or even her, her once she's throwing her E, and if you're playing an assassin type champion and you want to gap close, really just look for those cooldowns. Um, her cooldowns are really, really long, like something like 12, 15 seconds. So, uh, a level when when the, in the early like levels, when when she's got long cooldowns like that, you can really take advantage of it. And so right now, I've already got a kill. Um, and we're, I'm guessing we're up in CS as well. So now it's time to start running away with the game. Now I can start zoning her, even though she's ranged, and just force her to, her to E farm. That's the only really well farming tool she's going to have now. So we'll see how the lane plays out. Uh, what my objective in this game is just to snowball this lane and then go and uh, run away with the game. I did ask the Graves if he wanted to uh, mid, because I wasn't sure. Um, I don't know, I wasn't sure about the Lux matchup, I, I guess. Um, I just thought um, Akali would be able to shit on Grey's once she got level 6. But um, we'll see what happens there. I think I end up swapping with him because he struggles. But since I'm so far... Uh, since I win this lane so hard... So there she goes using a Q to uh, farm again. And since I win this lane so hard... Um, I'm able to lane swap and then Grey's still has an advantage even though he's losing um, the top lane. Which you'll see, you'll see a bit later. <coughs> So now I've got the minion wave right by my tower, getting some vision. Ah, uh, they've got a what Jax jungle, so I really don't want to get ganked by Jax. See how she's always using a Q to farm? She must be, she must have low mana. Yeah, she's got low mana, see? And I think she must only have like 100 mana left, if that. 50 mana, maybe. Because she's, I guess she knows that if I if I go on her, she's going to take a shitload of damage and probably die, so. But I'm always looking for opportunities, right? So, and, and I'm even prepping minions right now, because I, I want to just always have the option to sort of go on her, right? So I've got oh, this minion. Yeah, see, I prepped that minion and just waited. And look how much damage we got on her. Got hit by that Q, not a big deal. See, she got the Thunderlords on me, and that didn't really do much, so... That's because she just didn't get to buy anything when she um, died. Whereas I got my Phage components, which is huge. But now she's getting shoved in. 
And I'm always looking for these opportunities, just hurting her mana pool. Get the stun off there. Uh, make a bit of a miscalculation here. Uh, ideally, I would have had enough mana to do my Q. That's one thing you can take from this, at least. Um, but if you're going to go for an all-in, if you're like an assassin that uses mana, uh, you always want to check how much mana you have. Um, that's why I always have the mana, that mana uh, costs in my in my ability box, because I just like calculating quick, like in a, in a second, sort of, do I have enough mana to do an all-in? Um, in a situation where I don't have a lot of mana and in that case I didn't I just went for it and I and I paid the price by not getting the kill But now since I've regen I'm using my corrupting potion just for the mana <laughs> So once I've got enough mana I will be looking to to kill this girl And I've got my ignite back up she has her she must have her ignite back up too, right? So that's one thing to note down like if she if I dive her and she stuns me in her tower and she uses ignite on me I could probably die there we go. It's just about waiting for that time when she uses an ability, right? So I've got the minions prepped already. I always, I'm, I'm always prepping minions uh, because it's Lux. You know, the only way to kill her is to gap close, right? So I always want to uh, keep those minions prepped, and that's what I was doing. I'm just always prepping minions and looking for an opening. And as soon as, as soon as she um, started that animation for that ult, I was ready to pounce on that minion, get the Q reset, and then just jump on her, uh, ignite, and then you know, finish her off. So now I can just push this into lane for free. And once you know your champion, if you if you are a one trick or if you just have a lot of experience on your champion, you you'll soon you'll see more options, uh, you know, openings for opportunity to kill or get good trades off in lane, right? So since I know the cooldowns of Lux, because I I've played a bit of Lux back in you know like season four or something like that, I know for a fact that you know if she uses if she uses one ability, you know, it's over for her. She she can't really trade with me and I can I can go on her that's the time to go on her and and also know I also know you know with Aurelia uh, my damage output so with with a Lux she's obviously squishy and me even though I put three points on my E um, I can still burst her like really crazy so I got my Sheen now so now that I've got Sheen it's even worse I can just burst the shit out of her and that's gonna be the aim here just when she comes to lane burst her or try and chunk her for at least half of her health and then just make her scared of me. Yeah, this is the point where um, Graves starts losing to Akali. She's hit level 6 and he just can't win. He can't, he doesn't have enough, uh, since she's got the 3 stacks of her ult, he doesn't have enough damage to um, keep up with her burst, so that's unfortunate, but uh, he blew a sum. At some point I think I asked to swap or I'd just go top. But now since we're so far ahead of Lux, I'm just roaming. See the blue buff there? I think I take it. You can't make that Q jump over the wall. It's so shit. I've tried it like in a custom and just trying to get in range for the Q jump, and I can't seem to do it. It's pretty annoying. But see, me taking this blue since I saw Jackson our top river. It's a free blue, and I don't think it'd be watered at this point in the game. And our bot lane has priority anyway because you know they're pushed up. So um, if their bot lane does try and come back on me, they can just push the. Uh, what do you call it? Push the push the tower, and I can just back off. <laughs> He's like, Aurelia, I'm struggling top if the office stall stands. <laughs> so I think I think I do, uh, you know, be a GC and uh, switch for them. But even though he's losing top, uh, you know, Lux is so far behind as well. That means, you know, when I go to switch, yeah, I'm, see, I'm a GC. I'm a GC. So even when he does come mid, he. Um, to, to get away from the Akali, um, he's, he's still got to have a good lane. Just simply because uh, Lux is so far behind. <laughs> but I think I'm trying to shove it in. Like, I don't want to just give him all my CS, right? I just want to shove it in and then and then go mid. <laughs> shove it in. There we go. So I shoved it now. He's still top, though. He... I thought it would have come straight to mid, but I don't want to just leave the CS, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I think he's coming down now. I think I try and shove it in and then go. Do I? Oh, I'm looking for a play. I prepped the minion. Look at that. See, it's all these different windows of opportunity that you see, no matter how big or small. Uh, that You know, like that, I didn't even see that when I'm watching this video right now. I forgot that I did that. Um... But in the game, I must have been uh, really focusing on that window of opportunity 
uh, to kill the Lux again. And even though it cost me my flash, I still killed her. You know, I'm basically deleting her from the game at the moment. So, um, you know, as you can see, uh, when you're when you're landing against your opponent and you have the upper hand, you're you're constantly looking at um, decision. You're constantly looking at different things you can do to get a good outcome, right? So, um, it could be as simple as you know trying to win a trade, uh, like if their if their ability is down, trying to uh, trade with them and get a good trade. Or, you know, going for that all-in like I just did, right? So, cost me my flash, but that's okay. Um, if I didn't flash, I obviously wouldn't have got the kill, so... Um, still worth I don't really need my flash. I'm so far ahead. You know, 3-0 and with uh, 90 CS at 11 minutes. It's pre pretty decent, right? Could be better, but that's fine. Now I'm just waiting for the Akali to come top. Because, um, you know, she's going to be thinking that she's strong. She can take me. She's been killing graves. But then when, when she sees me, I'm a level above her as well. What happens here? I'm just hoping she's gonna try and fight me at this point, cause I I I'm, I want to fight her. Like I've almost got my Triforce, uh, got my Merc Treads as well, because they have an Akali top, uh, Lux Mid Sona support. So I got quite a lot of AP, and even Jax has a bit of AP with his W. Not too much, but it, if he does, if he goes Blood like Blood Razor, then he does have quite a bit of magic damage. So I think Merc Treads was good, just cause like, Lux has that stun, Sona has that ult, all those things add up, right? So. I don't know why she went back for the uh, Q on me. And then Shivana catches Jax out there. He misses a stun. What I should have done there is Q reset onto the minion and then, and then Q Jax. He would have died. But I didn't. And I'm tanking for Shivana. I should have tanked one more tower shot, I think. But she's still got it. She's uh, you know quite strong in her dragon form, so that's good. And since Graves was able to go mid and have a free, have a free lane, essentially, so I've won mid lane. I've won mid lane through my, my own, uh, you know, snowballing through the lane, and I've also won top lane just from, just from swapping with Graves, getting this tower with Shivana, and you know, killing Akali and killing Jax. Right. So we just won. We just won two lanes right then. Uh, just trying to deny a couple of CS before I kill the tower. I always try and make sure I get the gold. I didn't in that case, unfortunately, but uh, that means the team gets some gold. That's fine. So now I'm going to buy my tri No, I'm not. I'm going to push the lane. That's This is greed. This is greed right here. Because I, I I only see two of them on the map. The Jackson and Akali could be coming for me right now. I wouldn't know. But uh, that's okay. As long as I can just clear it and get out. See, Akali was there. I don't know where Jax was, though. If, if he was there, maybe they could have gone on me. I'm not sure. All I know is I go for my Triforce. And I think this game, I go for the infamous, uh, my favorite Wits End build. I love the Wits End build versus AP comps, just because, I don't know, Wits End is just such a cheap item, and it's, I don't know, I just like it. No one else really likes it, but I, I love it. I love Wits End. I, I used to build it quite often, um, but not so much anymore. There's just, uh, there's, there is better items to build, but since they have so much AP on their team, I decided to build it since I'm snowballing, and I just want to get another second quick item so I can move on to my third and fourth items and just get to my full build as soon as possible so I can um, you know try and finish the game and, and help my team right because Aurelia you know full build six items if it's 40 minutes in the game she's not really the best everyone else a lot lots of other champions can out jewel her right so quickly just shut on that Jax right there he shouldn't be invading our jungle anyway he's, he's behind so he he should be in his own juggle trying to farm up and, you know, that sort of thing. Maybe he saw Shivana down our bot side, so that's why he invaded. I'm not sure, but if I was that Jax and I was behind, I would definitely wouldn't be going to my, the other person's jungle. I would just be warding up my own jungle at the river entrances and stuff like that and just farming what I can. But he got greedy, I suppose. So I feel like since I'm so far ahead, I should I should probably be grouping with my team. Like I said, this is a Smurf account, so I'm just sort of trying to have fun and test my limits. Um, <laughs> which sounds quite bad, but um, that's all that's all I'm trying to do, essentially. Like, I'm trying to win, definitely. But I'm also trying to test test the damage output and things like that of different builds. Um, especially when I'm ahead. Just go on the Akali there, get some damage on her. There we go. You may live. So she's got no shroud now, so I can freely push this tower. She can't stop me without her shroud. She needs a shroud to be able to stop me from pushing this tower. So any, so this is one of those conditional things, right? Since her shroud's gone, she can't 
she can't contest me when I'm pushing the tower. Although I do go and help the graves, use my flash there. Merc Tread's coming in handy. And sure, Sona goes down. Another double kill. So the Merc Trades came in handy, but I kind of wish I, I kind of wish I maxed, uh, like maybe three points in E and then max Q afterwards. I feel like Q would have been probably a better choice just because, uh, I think I maxed E because of the Akali. Like if you want to, if, if Akali comes at you, you can stun her and then you've got those two seconds until she goes invisible in a shroud. So that's, see like this right here. I was, if I didn't max E, you know, she would have gone invisible, uh, you know, got out of invisibility way faster and just kill her there with, she doesn't ignite me. And then the BM, that's just BM. <laughs> but that's fine, so I get my wits in. My favorite item, I love wits in so much. And now we've got so much magic resist and so much stacking power, right? So I guess it's a good split push build, but I also like it for the, you know, the, the 1v whatever potential, you know, like 1v2, 1v3. Because uh, the way it works is, you know, if you're attacking someone, they lose magic resist and you also gain magic resist up to five stacks right so potentially you can create a difference of 50 magic resist so it's it's a situational item um but i just love it i just love it it's a cheap attack it's a cheap um you know like it's like the bargain bin item you know the warehouse or the walmart or whatever you know but it's it's so good i love it i'll forever love this item especially versus like full ap comps and that sort of thing sometimes uh you know if you're versing like a Vladimir or Swain or something like that. It's really good to rush wits end if you... It depends on the team though. Like if they have an AP jungler, um, you know, rushing like a wits end just to win the to win the lane and, you know, deal with the jungle ganks can be quite good. You know, and then you obviously want to get your Triforce after that. But, you know, even pros do it. They'll rush wits end just to win the lane and, you know, defend themselves from the jungle ganks or, or the mid roams or whatever. And then they'll go into like a Triforce and then like a tanky build or something like that. But in this case, it's just simply because of the AP threats. Stacking up on the Merc Treads and the, the Wits End. And I'm split pushing for free right now, right? There's three... three. It looks like there's three bot right now. So even though I could be down there and probably get all of those kills, uh, I'm just splitting. Akali's up here. Get my stun on her. There we go. She didn't even shroud. So since I killed her so easily... Um, that's one, you know, it's one problem with their team. They don't have any tanks, right? So I can, I can get away with building this. I mean, they've got Jax who, you know, builds HP and his ult gets, gives him resistances, right? But, you know, he doesn't have, he doesn't really have any tank stats, right? So I can get away with building really aggressive and really, you know, like Assassin Aurelia. You know, I love Assassin Aurelia. It's so much fun. And I can get away with it too. So even though they've got Sona with the shields and the heals, you know, Kate and Lux are juicy targets. They're my targets at the moment. In this case, it was Akali um, in the top lane because she's the only one there. But generally, in like the team fights, you know, like the, the Sona, the Lux, and the Kate are just juicy targets, and they're the ones I go for for you know to try and just win the team fight instantly. Because if you can delete one person from the team fight at least, um, yeah, I got greedy here. You know, if you can delete one person from the team fight before it really kicks off, um, you know, it's, it should be basically a one team fight. Yeah, so I got greedy there, uh, died, uh, <laughs> told my team they could have told me. Um, I will I will say that that was completely my fault because I should have been paying attention to the minimap, but, you know, it's just a little bit of salt there. Um, <laughs> excuse that. It happens to everyone, right? So it's okay. Going for the Hex Drinker. Uh, that's just to deal with the burst, especially Akali's burst. If she bursts me down past, uh, you know, past that certain amount of HP, and I get the uh, hex drinker passive, that's, that'll be really good for me. You know, I can try and um, come back in that in that one v one. But at this point, I don't think she can really burst me. But it's always good for the burst. It's always good for the burst. If like if I get caught by Lux or something like that, um, you know, it's gonna help. That that shield, that magic shield, is gonna help a lot. So I was just testing out like a a magic damage. Um, to counter the AP champions, right? So, all right, I, th I feel like Triforce into Wits End with Merc Treads and Hexdring is quite good. Uh, if you really wanted to, I reckon you could go for a Spirit Visage, followed by maybe a GA or something. Well, the new GA is armor, but... Uh, if they have, like, a Cat, like, or even a Kali. A Kali needs resets, and uh, even Lux. Um, 
even Lux gets resets now. Like, if she gets a kill with her ult, um, she you show, reduces the cooldown. So, having GA versus some of these assassin uh, you know, like, magic damage champions is quite good because if they don't get the resets, you know, they can't necessarily excel in the team fight. Just like a Katarina, you know, if she can't, if, she, if you have a GA and she jumps in, uh, and she takes your GA, she doesn't get any resets. So, keep that in mind. Because if she gets no resets, then, you know, she can't just keep jumping and jumping and jumping on your team and, you know, potentially kill them all. See my team running away from the fight there. I'm just having sp fun split pushing, it's quite fun. I've got that attack speed build, and the only person that's going to really try and stop me is Akali, right? So, I just go for the split. Just a fun, it's just, I don't know. Easy way to play. It's an easy way to play to split push, but you've got to know when to split push. In this case, I can basically do whatever I want because I'm so strong. Like, Akali, Akali's not going to stop me. Jax is there. Sona's ba backing now. But no one can really stop me, so I just get this for free. And I'm just letting my team do whatever they want. I don't really care. Uh, like, I know I'm going to carry this game no matter what, right? So, I just, I just take over their top side, get that in her... You know, it's only 22 minutes getting the inhib right, so, uh, you know, take their red buff, get called a beast by Graves, shoutouts, shoutouts to Graves. But I think it's important to understand that not every game goes like this, right, so even, even pros, right, you know, like Faker, he doesn't always go, you know, 8 and 2, you know, he has his bad games and his good games, right, but this is just one of those situations, um, uh, I flashed after I killed her, okay. Um, you know, where their team comp allowed me to build this type of build, right? And it's it's good for assassinating these these sort of champions like Lux. Look at that, that stun doesn't even last long because it Merc trades in my passive. And I'm always just looking to kill her. I just want to, I'm just out for blood at this point. Jax jumps on me, so I go over to the Aurelia. Look how fast I kill her, man. And see, since I, look at that Hex Drinker passive, man, it's so good. Normally, you know, Jax would just burst you down, like, um, you know, with his with his passive gain the auto attack stacks and get, get gain attack speed, but since I got that lifeline passive from Hex Drinker, man, it just saves you so much. And even though I'm low health here, I'm just going to let Graves die, and I think I go in for <laughs> Oh, he flashes the sooner or I think I go in for a greed kill here, I'm not sure. But, you know, look how far ahead I am. Like, I'm four levels above their support, three levels above their ADC. Look at that. You know, it's just about deleting people. I don't care that Graves died or anything like that. I just care that I killed the ADC. <laughs> I thought Akali went over the wall. If I was that Akali, I would have gone over the wall. Like, just over that wall. And stayed invisible. But, um... Uh, she didn't. But then she paid with it with her life. So that's okay. And Lux trying to force us off there. See, what does what does Lux do at this point? You know, um, she's she's fed me quite hard in lane. I've snowballed that lead um, across the whole team, and now you know she doesn't have enough gold to snowball get her snowball the items like Rabidons, Ludens, Echo, that sort of thing. Um, it's sort of one or the other with her at the moment, and she doesn't even have any of those items yet. So that's that's really good. Uh, backing now. See, I should have backed ages ago. You don't really want to sit on three and a half k gold. You normally, you know, if you get sort of, you want to always spend your gold after like a fight or something or an objective or something like that, because you always want to. Like, since I've got three and a half got thousand gold in my bank, it's basically like not having it right because I haven't spent it. So that's when, that's when people fuck up a lot. They they get greedy and they hold on to a shitload of gold, stay in lane or whatever, and then if their laner backs, um, and then comes back to lane and kills them, they wonder why they, why they died. Where it's because they've, they're sitting on all this gold, haven't spent it. So it's almost like they're not ahead in gold, because they haven't spent the gold. So always make sure you spend your gold. In this case, I was able to get a, um, <coughs> finish off my more, Get my more and get my, what do you call it? Um, Tiamat. Tiamat's just for the wave clear and the auto reset. Normally I'd chuck this into a, a Titanic Hydro. But it's mostly just for the split push. Just for fun, really. And just uh, clean up that kill there. It's a good thing with the rally rate. You can just clean up kills so easily once you're once you're strong. I don't know if we get any kills here. I think I fuck up. 
Oh, I don't die. That's good. See, they can't really stop our CJ. It's quite crazy. Because even if they CC me, and they, they probably can't burst me down hard enough, then I can probably um, let loose and kill at least one of them. But I wouldn't really dive under, under the tower and, you know, try and go one for one. That's not worth it in my books. With how, with how strong I am and the amount of gold that I have, it's not worth me dying, like, one for one at all. But we can, we're controlling the pace of the game right now, right? So, well, I'm controlling the pace of the game right now. I'm just been, I'm just being greedy, taking the red buff, taking everything. I should really spend my gold and get um, get the next component of my uh, Titanic Hydra. I don't know if I do. I should do here. So if we look at my build, I'm almost four items at 26 minutes, which is you know close to close to full build. Um, <laughs> 30 minutes to have full build, yeah, it's just quite crazy. You'd think about it, you know, 40 minutes is generally when people sort of start hitting full builds and things like that, but to have it 10 minutes early feels so good on Aurelia because this is like, you know, your power spike, um, you know, the t between 20 and 30 minutes after you've got your Triforce, your, you know, Triforce and between two and three items is when you really excel. But at this point, since I'm full build, everyone's still got to get to their three items and then catch up. And it was so fed, like I just dive the back line straight away, kill Sona. Uh, I was going on to Kate, but I didn't have my Q uh, in time. I felt like if I went for that, I would have got hit by the trap and died to a Kali, but... That's alright. <laughs> Graves, dives like an idiot. That's fine. I got my flash up. I'm looking at my flash because I want this luck, say. <laughs> Just delete her out of the face of the planet. Get a free tower. And this, since you build damage on uh, um, Aurelia, you, you one-shot all the minions, eh? Like, especially with your, uh, your Tiamat. Um, you one shot the back minions, so you don't have to like, um, you don't have to piss around trying to prep them or anything, like at this point in the game, so you just go straight, uh, straight to do a killer minion with your Q reset, um, nice and easy, and then you can just, you've got a lot of mobility generally. And that's the problem with building tank earlier, like if you build Triforce strength into tank, you don't get all that, um, you don't get as much mobility through Q resetting, you have to sort of prep them or make sure you have your Sheen proc and your W, but in this case, I, I, I think I, I probably don't, uh, I probably need my W or a Sheen proc to, uh, one hit the back minions, but, you know, generally, you know, it's, it's, it's nice and easy to one hit them, and then get a free Q reset, which is good. And then here, just stealing some of the gold. I don't, I don't know what Sona's doing. I just Q onto her, she flashes, I think she ults, she must ult. There we go. I think we catch up to her. Yeah, nice, another free kill. Let's clear this. And see all the picks we've got around the map. Um, just taking... Taking everyone out of the game. Oh, no, please. <laughs> you know, just, just killing everyone, you know, one one by one all the time. You know, just gives them that much less presence on the map, which means they don't get as much XP or gold. And just... It just every time you kill them, it just sets them behind that much more. That's, it's quite... It's quite important to know, you know, if you keep killing someone over and over again, they're not on the map, so they can't do anything, and also they're not getting any gold or XP. And XP is a big one. Like, uh, if you've ever played like a bot game, and you keep killing the bot over and over and over again, um, you you just get a hit in levels um, naturally because the bot's never in lane, <laughs> and you're always denying the bot, you know, the champion, you know, um, denying the minions, denying them gold and XP. This is the same thing, um, you know, uh, denying, killing them over and over again with my team or by myself and then just denying them gold all the time and that's how I managed to get you know um, so many levels ahead well I'm only two levels ahead of Kate now but earlier in the game I was you know uh, quite a, quite a few levels ahead and two levels are still big she doesn't have her third level ult yet you know Sona's level 13 I'm four levels ahead of her um, so she's like a free target you know she can't really she's not going to be able to kill me or get away from me really But see, it's only a matter of time before all my damage becomes irrelevant because they'll start to get more damage and, um, you know, higher in level, put out more damage and be harder to kill. Even the Lux, you know, she'll have a bigger shield, she'll have a more powerful stun and a combo. And the same with the Kali, she might, they might be able to all in me eventually, right? So, <clears throat> so it's important to note that, you know, the game's at 30 minutes. We do want to end. Uh, we, we should be ending soon. 
Uh, right here, I'm just being a dick and just seeing if they're going to make a mistake um, and come into the jungle. I don't even know if it's watered. I don't know if we uh, swept it, but if they do come in there, yeah, obviously they'll die. But it's just whether they make the big mistake or not. And by keeping the pressure up here, um, you know, Shivana gets another free dragon. It's just another objective, you know, like it's just another free objective that we get um, just by keeping a bit of pressure up top and keeping them guessing where where they can and can't go without getting killed. Oh, now we sweep it. So it wasn't watered or anything, but this must be watered. No, oh yeah, it's watered. Oh, I flashed away from Jax. I feel like if I didn't flash that, I would have got so altered, Kate trapped, and I, would, I just would have got burst and deleted. Kate ults there for some stupid reason. I don't know why she would have done that. And then Lux tries to get away. She can't get away. Uh, with the help of Jenna. There we go. And then the Jax. Ignite the Jax straight away. And then Jenna with the OP uh, redemption. And this is just, this is just greeting. Uh, greeting for the kill for Sona, but... Um, I was trying to get a seeing if I, could, if I could get a Penta, but um, unfortunately I didn't. That's okay. Level 18. So we ended up 19 kills, uh, only two deaths, which is pretty good. Um, you know, it's just it's just the, how the game went. You know, and, and the team comp, the game, and the champions, and it sort of gave me the ability to build how I did and do the things I did because all the champions in the game I could sort of take. I can take care of early and especially on my power spikes so knowing that and knowing they don't have a good sort of front line until later in the game um, just means that I can ease quite easily you know rip them rip them apart and then obviously with the help of my team um, <clears throat> you know following up on that and, and you know, not being stupid that helps too right so yeah I just thought I'd uh, showcase that video just to, to show you know in smurf games like that you know, when you know more than your opponent uh, that information is valuable because you can you can see more windows of opportunity and make more plays like that, right? So that's just one thing to keep in mind if you're um, if you are like lower elo and um, you're struggling or whatever, you know, just always look for those windows of opportunity, uh, especially if you play uh, assassins or Aurelia even or in any, any lane really. If you're a solo laner or a bot laner, um, just always look for the cooldowns and try and work around the cooldowns and just take advantage of them, and then you can you can really run away with the game just like I did here. So anyway guys, that's the end of the video, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, give it a like if you liked it, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Yeah.